Hello, I'm Atuba George and I bless God for this great opportunity to be bringing His truth to you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your spirit of truth that you have given to us. Lord, we expect one thing only today. You will guide us into all truth. We will not walk in a lie. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Burdens are being lifted right now. Hallelujah. Yokes are being destroyed. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, whatever has been troubling you right now, I put a stop to it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be free from the bondage of that thing. Be free from the bondage of that thing. In Jesus' name, a Man. Now we are talking about God's financial plan. And yesterday I continued talking to you about making withdrawals. That's the most important part. What's the use if you can deposit but you cannot withdraw? But he's telling us you can withdraw from your heavenly account. Praise God. Now let me show you something. In Matthew chapter 6. Remember, he says in verse 21, he says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Then look at verse 22. He says, The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, old King James says, single. If your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, have you ever wondered what Jesus meant in this place? Listen, he just told you don't lay up treasure on earth. Lay it up rather in heaven. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And then he goes on to say the lamp of the body is the eye. True statement. The lamp of the body is the eye. Then it says, if therefore your eye is single or good. If you've got good sight. That's what he's saying. Now what he's talking about sight, he's not talking, just talking about physical sight. So he's not saying if you have eye, physical eye issues, you're doomed. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about insight. When he says, if therefore your eye is good. Your perception is good. What you look at is good. That the only way this can be good, I'm telling you the truth, is when you look through the eyes of the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now I'm thinking, I should lay up treasure in heaven. Now, what do you want to do? You want to argue. What's the basis of your argument? All the theories, all the things you've heard, but bad testimonies yeah that's how you so, say ah, please oh, this thing i'm being careful you know you begin to talk like that what what are you doing you're damaging your sight but if your eyes single single to what lord if this is what you want me to do then i'll do it and that is it i'm not going to be weighing again whether should i should i not should i should i not Lord, if you are commanding me to do this, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. What, what I'm showing by that, you've got single eyes or you've got good eyes because he will never tell you to do what is not right for you. He will never tell you. He said, the Bible says his commandments are not grievous. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So get your eyes to be good. So your whole body will be full of light. Your revelation of life will be full of light. But when you've got bad eyes, oh, look at what he says. He said, but if your eyes is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Don't ever allow yourself to, your eyes or your sight to be darkened. How will your sight be darkened when you walk in strife? When you walk in envy, when you walk in all those disobedience. So you see, keep your eyes pure. 
I told you the only way you can keep that pure, keep your eyes pure, is put his word before your eyes. Let his word be the mirror through which you see. How do you do that? You judge every thought, every decision with his word. This is my action, this is my decision. Does it flow with God's thoughts? If it doesn't flow with God's thought, then I'm dropping it. So when I want to make withdrawals from heaven, because that's what we're talking about, I, I, I think about it. What do you want? Now remember Paul said, all things are yours. Have you seen that scripture before? <laughs> he says, all things are yours. Everything, everything you can think about, they all belong to you. Now, there's a, there's a reason God was communicating that to us. And what's the reason? So you don't go searching for what is already yours. That's why Jesus said, take no thought for your life. Why? Because the things that you're taking thought for are already yours. They are yours. That's what I told you yesterday. We are joint heirs with Christ. What does that mean? All things are yours. Everything Jesus has belongs to me. Praise God. So now what do I do? I come before him. I want to make withdrawals. Be certain or be sure you are not making withdrawals out of covetousness. You know what covetousness is? I'll tell you from Jesus' definition. Covetousness, you know, Jesus, remember one time a young man came to Jesus and said, Master, Tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. And Jesus said, who have made me a divider between you and your brother? A judge between you and your brother? And then he, he turned to his disciples and says, beware of covetousness. Because a man's life does not consist of the abundance of things which he possesses. So what is covetousness? Covetousness is that thinking in you that your life is is consist of the things that you are able to possess covetousness is the thinking that until i have my own house uh, I, I'm, I'm not i'm not and then you you begin to do everything humanly you understand what i'm saying to to just to get a house does God want you to have your own house? Sure he does. Not just, that, not just a willingness. He has made provision for that. So what do you do? See, listen. Why don't you just trust the Lord? Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. What are you seeking? God's mind concerning that thing you want to ask for. So when you make withdrawals, you make sure your heart is not after covetousness because God is not going to listen to you. You can have a genuine need. You understand what I'm talking about? So see, God wants you to have good things in life. He sure wants you to have good things in life. So don't be telling yourself, no, I don't want it to be like I'm asking God for a brand new car now. This bicycle I'm using is, 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 is okay for me. No, God doesn't like mediocre children. He doesn't want you to be a mediocre. He wants you to explore his glory. Hear me, hear me. God is rich. But the world cannot see his riches until they see it in you. You understand what I'm saying? So get your mind set when you make withdrawals. Be purposeful. Why do you need what you need? Say it before the Lord. Remember Jesus said, by your words you shall be justified and by your words you shall be condemned. What's he saying? Get, when you go before the Lord, tell him the reason you need what you're asking for. He will listen to your words. And sometimes you can even write it down. 
Lord, this is... See, why, why do you have to write it down? What, be, just be sure there is a definite day you can remember and reflect on that you made the request for those things. You know, sometimes you say, have you prayed about it? Yeah, I've prayed about it. When did you pray about it? Eh, I've been praying about it now. You have really not prayed about it. See? When you have prayed about something, it gets to that point when you know that, okay, it's time to release my faith for this thing. And then you make that request. From that moment, you know it is done. Somebody talks to you, oh, yeah, I prayed about it. Last week, this is what I said to the Lord. Two days ago, this is what I said to the Lord. And I believe you will soon see the manifestation. Because when we ask, what does God give us? See, listen, you know, sometimes people don't know this. You may ask for something physical, maybe a house, maybe a car. Now, when you ask for it, what happens? Someone say, oh, I asked for God for something since last year. It, it came after one year. Why is God slow? God wasn't slow. From the story of Daniel, you must have learned that the moment you set your heart to act. Now, what happens along the way? Many times, God causes, see, you, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You might be asking God for something today. Remember, you know, I told you last week, the Bible says the whole earth is out of course. Why? Because people have been doing the wrong things. People are in the wrong location that, where they have no business being. God wants you to be in a particular city, but you, you by yourself carried yourself to the wrong city. So everybody you were supposed to bless in that city God intended for you to be. You are not touching them. You are not blessing them. So in their lives, they are not making the kind of progress God has determined for them to make. Same way you two are not making progress. You are walking in the reverse. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why he, he, I told you yesterday, James 1.5 should be your friend. So when you ask the Lord for your withdrawals and then you are waiting, you want to know what to do? Ask the Lord. Lord, I asked you yesterday for this withdrawal. Is there anything you would want me to do? Because I have this, con don't be afraid to take your concerns to the Lord. Don't be afraid. He will not abuse you. He will not tell you you're a child. Why are you bringing up this kind of thing? No, no, no. That's why the Bible says he gives liberally. He does not upbraid. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't find fault. He doesn't start. God's not that kind of person that, you know, like some of us parents, your children ask you for something, and you begin to tell them all the reasons why they don't need that thing. But what's on your mind? You don't have the money to buy it, <laughs> or you're not willing to buy it. So you begin to tell her, that's not what God does. If you ask God for something, he makes it available to you, and he does that immediately, you ask. Why it delays sometimes, I'll tell you. Because line must be upon line, precept must be upon precept. If the person originally that God has ordained to give you that thing, is no longer in the city where he was supposed to dwell. Maybe because of, of an offense or something happened, he left that city. Now God will walk the way for your paths to cross. Now this is why sometimes prayers are delayed. Why? Angels are walking behind the scene. Making sure that line is all line. Precept is on precept. Because everything must go according to the way it is written. That's why you don't keep quiet. You keep asking the Lord. Now, when I mean asking the Lord, Father, I come to you again today, like I did two weeks ago. Father, I ask you for the... No, 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 no. When you done asking the first time, the remaining asking you do after that day is by giving thanks. Father, I bless you because the manifestation of what I asked you two weeks ago is coming to me. I receive it by faith. For when I prayed, I believe that I receive. So I'm going to have it. Praise God. And that should be your attitude. And you keep blessing the Lord, blessing the Lord. If there is anything he wants you to do, 
according to James 1 5. When you ask, he will instruct you. Praise God. My time is up again. Now, you know, I wish we can just continue this thing and just. But there are many things to share with you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.